Altec was the shining light of week one for Gravity. This is potentially the best team he's ever been on in the LCS. It's a very real opportunity. Gravity picked me up as a new AD, and for me it was very exciting for a new environment. He's had a lot of individual accolades from fans talking about his potential, but now he has a chance to actually shine as a team. Gravity gets all the way through. They're going to get these last two guys. A triple kill for Altec in his first game on the team. I feel like Gravity definitely has an uphill battle here against Cloud9. Sneaky has been one of the top, if not the top, AD carry in North America. Altec definitely has a big challenge ahead of him, working with his new partner, Bunny Poop. I definitely have high hopes for me and Bunny, as well as for the team. We can definitely compete with the top teams. Welcome to the 2015 North American League Championship Series. It's game day once again here in Los Angeles, and the crowd is fired up and ready for week two of our summer split. As you can see, lining up outside, supporting their favorite teams, getting pumped up. Lots of energy. Phoenix and the rest of Team Liquid looking relaxed. They'll be trying to extend their undefeated record against our newer team, Enemy here in Ox. Definitely getting in some last minute practice as you see yet to change into his team gear, but maybe that's a, a pregame ritual. And of course, Cloud9 getting in a little early today into the studio and balls in the bag doing the heavy lifting there. Of course. We'll see if he can do some heavy lifting today in their matches. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson. And joining me for our first three games of the day are Aiden Zyrene Moon and Joshua Jett Leesman. How are you gentlemen doing today? I'm doing great. Ready for some games? Yeah, I'm ready yeah. for some games. I think all five matchups today are actually fairly compelling for one reason or another. Like the COG teammate game, Yen against COG. You go through every game and there's a cool storyline somewhere in there. Well, and here's the thing. We're only 10 games into the summer split and there's still a fair number of teams that are trying to, you know, suss each other out. So which are the teams that you guys are specifically looking at today? I'm looking at enemy esports because... Whenever I ask people for their power rankings, Enemy Esports has always had the most variance in where people think they stand at the moment. And I feel like they haven't shown us everything that they're capable of, and especially in that game against TSM last week, where they gave TSM a big run for their money. Afterwards, TSM had nothing but praise and a very little bit of criticism. They said their individual skill was great and that their team play was the only thing that was really lacking, that they were losing objectives off of that. Back in Challenger, though, Enemy Esports was the teamwork team. And so coming into a week against the two-time defending champion with no practice for the last two weeks and fresh out of challenger, that's a great spot to be in as enemy. So I want to see them going forward today against the third place finishing team, and that's going to give us a better idea of where this team stands. Yeah, and I mean, I want to talk about the undefeated team so far in the LCS. So Team Liquid is going to be a really cool match right off the bat against enemy because Team Liquid's a team that played well last week, but... They, they, they played well with the, by the fact that they got the victories, yeah. but they were not happy with their performance, and they played pretty easy opponents overall. And then we don't necessarily know the power level of enemies, so how's that going to work out? And then COG, I'm just interested in that because Golden Age returns, right? How long will they be undefeated? They looked way better than any other team throughout all of last week, and it doesn't look like that collapse they had at the end of the split in the playoffs carried through to the start of this one, and maybe the roster changes are actually really positive. All right, well, pulling up the standings, we see CLG and Team Liquid sharing the top spot, as Jat just mentioned. Then, of course, we've got the bulk of the NALCS tied for third place, each with one win and one loss. Finally, Team 8 and Team Dragon Knights are tied for ninth with two losses. Looking at today's schedule, though, up first, we've got Enemy Esports facing off against Team Liquid. Then Cloud9 will take on Gravity. And in our third match, it's a rematch of our spring playoff semifinals with TSM versus Team Impulse. Looking ahead to tomorrow, though, and our game, Game of the week, we've got the latest, chap the latest chapter in the longest standing rivalry in League of Legends, Counter Logic Gaming versus Team Solo Mid. And we've got lots of good matchups in store this week. We've hit on some of the teams that we'll be watching, but who are some of the players that you guys will be keeping your eye on individually? Well, since I'm watching Enemy Esports, I think the big part of that team I need to watch this week is Trashy. Because their jungler, he was the guy who was out for those previous weeks, getting his visa taken care of. He was suffering from a lack of sleep and a lack of practice. This guy was a huge force in Challenger, both in EU and NA when he played in both Challenger series, and he was feared 
in the jungle. He was very aggressive early. He was making these team fight initiations. And last week, he busted out an Evelyn. And when I talked to Enemy, that was their first game playing with an Evelyn jungle. And they whipped it out against TSM. And you can see right there, the gold was even 25 minutes into the game. And they come away with some great team fights in that game, too. So I want to see Trashy step up to the plate and be the Trashy that we saw in Challenger. Yeah, plus he's Danish, which gives him like 15 more league points. That's like, that's like a plus players. five bonus to playing league. Yeah. That's going to be exciting. I want to pay attention more to Quas this week because last week, specifically the two champions he played, Nar and Rumble, he had big games on both of them. Nar, ultimate after ultimate, he was kind of the consistent player to a somewhat inconsistent in-game team, Liquid team. So Nar, he absolutely crushed. He got tons of big Nar plays. I think that'll be a pick for him the entire split. And Rumble, he didn't do that great in lane. Cali Troll started getting going on Aurelia, but then he had some spectacular Rumble ultimates later on in the game. And we always talk about Every time we give Quas praise, the next week he'll go in lane egg. So we gave him praise. Maybe he can stay consistent, and that's what Team Liquid needs to do. Our first time. MVP of the split. We'll see if he can continue rolling through with those MVP-like performances. Yeah, and I want to talk about another guy, too, Azingi, because this guy is a guy who's never really had an MVP performance. Last week, he had the best performance of his LCS career to date. He brought early game pressure to the lane of Kiwi Kid and Core JJ, and he ganked that lane and shut down Sneaky Elimination and freed up the map, which is how Dignitas works best. When, a when they're able to roam around the map and they open up Kiwi Kid for roams and they get this early advantage on Core JJ, it's just a huge snowball. So this is the play style I want to see from Dignitas more. I want to see Azingi have early pressure and free up their laners because they're really good when the map is open. Yeah, he played great. Another guy who played pretty well last week was Keen. But the main reason I want to pay attention to this guy is because he plays unconventional champions. Keen seems to get his edge on the opponent by just playing things that the other guy's not used to, which works to a point because if he's not winning the straight up matchups with Cassiopeia and Azir, how many new champions can you really pull out? There's 125 champions in League of Legends, but when you start thinking about the number of champions that are played in mid versus that can actually go mid versus things that people haven't seen, that pool gets much smaller. So I wonder how many more tricks he has up his sleeve. Bard mid? That's not one of the tricks. <laughs> okay, shut down. Just like that. Another player to watch, though, is Lemon Nation. The man with the plan, Old Money Beard himself, joins X Special as the only players in the North American LCS to rack up 1,000 assists for the regular season. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we missed this last week when it happened. It was his fifth assist in the game when he got this. And what's impressive here is over in the European LCS, Yellowstar just got his 1,000th assist. Lemon Nation never played in the spring split of 2013. So he's done this in 28 fewer games than the people above him on this list. So assist per game and the pace Lemon Nation is going at is very impressive. Yeah, out of everybody on that list, he has the most average assist per game. Yeah, I mean, looking at this list, you see all of these names that we've you, we've known from the beginning of the LCS. They're still on this list, but Lemonation shot right to the top. Meteos not terribly far behind another member of Cloud9, which did not partake in those early splits. Well, that's going to do it for us here. We've got lots of teams and lots of players to watch. Now we're going to throw it over to our casters to get us into the games. Thank you very much, Dash. What's up, everybody? Got an awesome crowd here. I am David Fictirly and hiding out on the caster desk until the heat blows over. Sam Kobe Hartman. The heat? The heat. All right, I'm never going back, Freak. Never going go back. back. No, no, you're, you're safe here. I'll keep them all off you. We're ready to kick off our first game of the day. It's Enemy Esports versus Team Liquid. Now, Enemy Esports are coming off a very close game against defending champions Team Solo Mid. With a few more solid performances, maybe they distinguish themselves as a playoff contender. Yeah, definitely. Inox, he performed really well uh, in the mid lane. Of course, he did get a lot of help versus Bjergsen. Sure. You know, he got uh, ganks from not only his jungler, but also flares roaming down from the top lane to get that first blood. He's got a really another, uh, really another tough matchup today with Phoenix because Phoenix has really started um, emerging um, as a very strong point for Team Liquid, transitioning from just strong scrim play into LCS play. Though Phoenix was a little bit disappointed last week, of course, with that solo kill that he chased Bishu a little bit too close to the turret and paid for it. Yeah, it was a pretty good outplay overall, though. Uh, the thing is, I do want to sort of stress how good Phoenix really is. Last week, I got to talk to Incarnation in Client on Sunday, and I asked him for his, like, mid lane power rankings, essentially. And he's like, TSM's hardest to play against because they spend so much time there. But it's like one-on-one, -on -one, Phoenix is the hardest player to play against in the NALCS. So Incarnation gives praise to Phoenix as the number one here. Uh, but of course, we've seen throughout both these lineups that 
almost everyone on either of these teams can step up and carry the game themselves. True. If we look across to the other side of the rift, we've got Otter. He showed up really well for them. Week one went 10, 1, and 6 against Gravity on Vayne and established himself as a true bottom lane threat. Vayne, though, of course, that is uh, you know Piglet's favorite champion. We'll see how he does against the world champion. That could be a fun one to watch for, absolutely. Now, uh, speaking of bottom laners, though, Expecial isn't too worried about Otter or the rest of Team Enemy, uh, but that doesn't mean that Team Liquid are taking this game for granted. I'm not too surprised about Enemy's performance. I didn't expect them to beat Gravity, but I don't think they're a strong team. I mean, they they just, they just had a lucky game, I'd say, and I still rate them as one of the bottom few teams. But just because I don't think they're strong doesn't mean that we can underestimate them or even think that they can't beat us. I mean, we, we lose early game a lot, uh, especially in the past few games, and we need to fix them, and we need to beat them in laning and beat them in rotations and just map movement as well. Lucky game. I don't, I don't <laughs> think they're a strong team. Actually, for those of you who missed it in the audience, everyone goes, whoa, when he said that line. Ooh, so ev ev everyone's all ready for this one. Either way, let's check out the starting lineups. On the blue side, enemy eSports. Flares in the top lane, Trashy in the jungle, Inox in mid, Otter on AD carry, and Body Drop on support. And on the red side, it's Team Liquid. Up top is Quas in the jungle. I will dominate. Mid, Phoenix, AD carry, Piglet, and support, especially. So we're going to get ourselves into... Game one of the day of the week as well for North America. All 10 players from the lobby are going to be ready to go in a little bit. And I really want to see how these teams now approach the game now that we're into week two. Mm. Yeah, now that we're on to patch 5.10, mm -hmm. 